Before the break, we asked our studio audience, do you often feel tempted to buy more things even though you can live without them? Well, and here's how they voted. No surprise, it's a pretty popular emotion. 70%, yes. All right, well, we've got a comment here in the studio audience about that very issue. We're gonna go here to the back row. Yes, the way that I see it, we blame the media, we blame the advertisers that, you know, they're packaging everything on TV so that we're caught up in it. But I think there's something behind that that drives us. I think there's some kind of void that we all have that we're chasing this elusive component that's missing inside. And we chase it in items, the latest Blackberry, the latest... And the, the minute we get it, it's like... It's whatever it is that we don't have, it, it just shifts a little bit another further. Another one beyond the horizon. Okay, we've got another comment from the front row here. My feeling as such is that aff affluence now is more like a socioeconomic uh, norm because now you're not only you're competing with everyone else out there, it, the, the harder you work, the more you earn, it kind of propels you into a different position in society. All right, the endless cycle. Well, our next guest is, like all of us, a consumer. But he's on a journey to live a simpler life. Mark Powley is founder of a Christian network for simpler living called Breathe. It connects people who want to live less consumerist lives. He wrote a book called Consumer Detox. Mark joins us from Leeds, England. Mark, you say consumerism is part monster, part friend. What do you mean? Well, uh, I guess, like many people, uh, I am a consumer. Uh, that's who I am. That's one of the things I do. I haven't found a way to get through life without being a consumer. But at the same time, I'm aware of the costs of consumerism for my life, for the planet. So, yeah, it's a monster, but it's, it's part of my life as well. You're a married dad with four kids. How have you adapted this concept of simpler living for your own life? Well, for me, simpler living is, is about the choices we make. So um, one of the choices we've made with our kids is not to have uh, the TV on, um, and uh, also how we give them their pocket money. Uh, some of the things that we try and do as a family to, to share life together and, and to try and grow in generosity and help the kids grow in generosity. Uh, little steps, some of them, but uh, when you add them up, uh, they're making our life a bit different than it would have been otherwise. When we give our kids pocket money, we say to them, look, uh, the first third is, is giving. And you can save that up and give it to whomever you like. The second third is for saving. And the final third is for you to spend. So we're trying to say to them, look, uh, every week you can be living a generous life. Because that's one of the things we really want to give to our children. You bring a real spiritual angle into your whole consuming and write in your book that you pray and talk to God before you buy something. Why? Well, I think that the more I've thought about this and studied it, the more I've come to the conclusion that consumerism is it's like a spiritual issue. And so, yeah, I try and bring God back into my spending and my living. Before we buy something, we will pray for two weeks and see if, if God will bring it to us some other way, or maybe we'll be reflecting on whether we need it at all. And uh, I tell you, over the last two or three years, we've had amazing answers, uh, uh, things, uh, a watch, a microwave, even a piano. What do the teachings of Jesus have to say about consumerism, Mark? The first thing I think he'd say is, why are you worried and concerned and running after so many different things when actually there's one thing uh, following my kingdom, my ways, uh, and that is the thing that will truly make you fulfilled and make a difference. You write that something powerful happens when we have to wait to be fulfilled. You've got this vibe that you invite us to move into. What is with the power of waiting? Yeah, I think that is such a good question because we live, I reckon, in, a, in an age when we're used to getting everything quicker and quicker. Uh, all we have to do is, is press a button on the computer and, and we shop for stuff like that. But um, the thing about waiting is it helps us remember that everything is just a gift at the end of the day. And when we get things quickly, uh, we forget to appreciate them for what they are. We forget what a gift they are. So um, if you can think of something you've really waited for, those things become special. And I think if we knew more the specialness of everything in our life, even simple things like fresh water or, or the friends that we have, 
I think we'd appreciate them more, and as a result, I think we'd consume less. What does it take for the teachings of Jesus to filter into our habits of buying? Um, yeah, well, I, again, I think that's a really important question. Um, Jesus talked a lot about what it was to be blessed. He, uh, he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, and I think one of the things it means is to reflect on that. Uh, we often think it's more blessed to buy and to have, to fill our life full of things that we're doing, places we're going. But if it's more blessed to give than receive, I guess it's about looking through our lives and saying, where can I give? How can I take my life, uh, which is like a consumer story, and turn it into a different kind of story where I'm looking to give, uh, looking to be blessed? And uh, I guess if we could daily ask ourselves, what did Jesus mean by blessed? And how can I pursue that instead of some of the consumer things? then uh, I guess that would be a great place to start. Mark Powley, author of Consumer Detox, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we want to know what you think. Is a simpler lifestyle with less stuff realistic for you? Send us your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. We'd love to know what you think. So our studio audience is taking a live vote on that poll, and we'll have those results after the break. When we return, four steps to cure affluenza, and not one of them requires you to purchase a thing. Stay with us. Well, before the break, we asked our studio audience, is a simpler lifestyle with less stuff realistic for you? And here's how they voted, tipping the margins there on absolutely yes. Interesting, because earlier the poll was, are you tempted to buy more? That was a big yes as well. Well, today we heard some interesting challenges to confront affluenza, the odd disease of swollen expectations and dissatisfied appetites. So, some advice from a doctor seems to be in order. Dr. Lara Hartman, in her new book, Living Faithfully in a Fragile World, gives us a four-part prescription for what ails you when it comes to the cure for ethical spending. First, avoid sin. Second, embrace creation. Third, love the neighbor. And fourth, envision the future. Four tidy guidelines for staying in control of the greed that may threaten our health. Avoid sin, embrace creation, love the neighbor, and envision the future. It should be enough to keep us out of trouble if we could just spend a little focus on that. Well, today's audience will receive a complimentary book from the Faith Family Books and Gift Store. And for your chance to win a free book, send us your feedback on today's program. You can call the viewer feedback line or send us an email or leave a message. We're on Facebook and Twitter. So for the team at Context, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching. <laughs>